term BRICS plus was coined by China specifically to refer to the outreach program. Yes. Okay. Now you'll recall that the outreach program within the BRICS was initiated by South Africa oh. in 2013. Oh, I didn't know. For the first time at a BRICS summit that yes. you had an outreach and dialogue yes. with countries that are not part of the BRICS configuration, okay. it was in 2013. Yes. And this was an innovation of South Africa that BRICS is not a closed shop. While we have a membership of the five countries, the issues that we are raising is of global significance that impacts not just on the BRICS countries, but on the global community. Because one of the things that is high on the BRICS agenda is to influence the reconfiguration of the global setup, mm -hmm. based precisely on the changing geopolitical, geoeconomic, geofinance architecture of the global community. And to coordinate and articulate in a more stronger manner the views of the South. Now, South Africa then initiated the idea that as much as we get together as the five BRICS countries to dialogue amongst ourselves, all of the critical issues impacting on us individually, collectively as the BRICS and as the global community, that we should also reach out to countries that are keen to interact with the BRICS. And this was based on overtures made by several countries as we were preparing to take over the chairship uh, from India in 2013. And we then took on board the idea and sounded out our BRICS partners, because in BRICS we work uh, on consensus. Having discussed all, with all of the BRICS partners, the idea that we'd like to have an outreach and that the outreach specifically we wanted to be focused on Africa because it was the first time that a BRICS summit was coming to the African continent and we felt that you can't have a BRICS summit in Africa not focusing yes. also on Africa. Okay. So we consulted the AU and we got buy-in from the AU on the idea and then of course from all of the BRICS partners who unanimously said it's a fantastic idea. And if you look at the Sanya Declaration, it already made provision for BRICS dialoguing with international organization and partners. So the provision was there already laid by the BRICS leaders that we must also interact with the global community. So that is why you had the first dialogue during the summit in Etiquini with the African leadership. Thereafter, it was a tradition continued by every other country. Oh. Every year you had a dialogue or outreach with partners that the current sitting presidency of the BRICS uh, would decide on. And we found that in the case of Brazil, in the case of Russia, in the case of uh, China, all of them continued this tradition. India had the same. They had BIMSTEC, uh, Brazil had the community of Latin American states, and Russia, of course, had the uh, uh, Central Asian states. Yes. Now, China felt that they wanted to have a more wider configuration and not, not just confined to the regional groupings. Mm -hmm. So China invited countries from the Global South, five countries, uh, and called it a BRICS Plus. Now, it is nothing but another term for the outreach. Yes, yes. Okay. So, of course, what has been decided by South Africa, as you know, we have a BRICS interministerial committee uh, which oversees uh, our engagement with BRICS and guides uh, the engagement with BRICS. Now, at the last IMC, as we were preparing to take over the chairship, this issue of South Africa's priority and the structure of interaction with partners outside of the BRICS family was deliberated upon and the IMC directed that yes, in the first instance we must continue what we started in 2013, an engagement with Africa again because we started a process in 2013 and I think there's a responsibility on the part of South Africa to again report back to the African continent that BRICS does have an Africa focus and 
It has been since 2013 on the agenda consistently, especially how BRICS can work with Africa in terms of advancing Agenda 2063 and Africa's development uh, uh, trajectory. So it was agreed that we'll have the Africa outreach, plus we'll take on board yeah. the idea of a BRICS plus, yeah. that we also invite a few other countries from the Global South. Okay. So we haven't as yet decided that. We'll have to uh, seek guidance from our minister and the IMC, yeah. but the principle has been agreed upon. Okay. So maybe and around how many? Probably around the same number, four or five, that well, China uh, had. Uh, no, no, Africa will be this, the same number that we had in 20... We'll use the same formula. Okay. The formula we used in 2013 was a formula we discussed and agreed upon with the AU, was that we'll invite the chairs of all the current RECs, okay. AU recognized RECs, yeah. together with the chair of NEPAD, current chair of NEPAD, the chair of the African Union, and the chair of the African Union Commission. That was the formula we used, okay. which we'll, we'll keep in place because all of the African leaders were happy that mm -hmm. that was an inclusive process. Yeah. Now, we are still deliberating on the criteria we'll employ to invite the, the additional countries from the south, yeah. uh, that we are still waiting for guidance from our minister and the IMC. For us, BRICS is a cooperation mechanism between five countries. That's what brings us together. We came together to see how we can collectively address issues of common challenges that we have on, on our, each of our domestic mm -hmm. fronts, issues that we have collectively at the regional and the global level, mm -hmm. and how we can work together. Yeah. How we can work together in terms of shaping the current debate on the geopolitical front, how we can work together to further enhance multilateralism, mm -hmm. how we can work together to make sure that our Bretton Woods institution are inclusive and takes on board the concerns of the South. Mm -hmm. Likewise, our multilateral trading regime, how we can work together within the, the WTO uh, negotiations mm -hmm. uh, to advance the common needs of the South. All BRICS summits have the leaders close segment where they focus on the current geopolitical climate yeah. uh, within our respective neighborhoods and yeah. the global scene. We discuss this in a very robust, open way, exchange yeah. views and see how we can work together to impact positively on global hotspots, be it in Africa, be it in the Middle East or the Korean Peninsula, wherever there are major global hotspots. Uh, that's one of the themes that's always part of the discussions. Mm -hmm. Then we look at the global economic environment yeah. and what is it that BRICS can do as a collective to address the fault lines that are still there, the challenges that are there, and how we can collectively influence in a positive way uh, global growth and counteract the tendencies in some quarters to, to become more protectionist, to work against the benefits of globalization. Some of these challenges that are now mm -hmm. becoming uh, global challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are issues that will be discussed, reflection on the global economic scene, on the global financial markets, and how we can cooperate and work better to strengthen uh, the global financial architecture. And of course, uh, not to forget the people-to-people -people cooperation between our countries. That is very important. How do we continue addressing the, the challenges of poverty, underdevelopment, inequality within our countries? How can we share experiences? So these are common issues that we discuss at almost every summit. And I think it will be issues that will feature again uh, at the summit as well. The idea of looking at the feasibility of a rating agency of the South was discussed uh, at the Goa summit in India. And it's still very much in its exploratory uh, phase. Uh, it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but it's, it's one of the topics that is being looked at in terms of... Uh, 
projects that have been agreed upon to look at the feasibility and viability. Mm -hmm. Like the BRICS Bank, we first had to determine is this feasible, is it viable, is it something we want, is it going to work for us. Mm -hmm. So it's very much in its exploratory phase at the moment. BRICS as a grouping is not in competition with any other global formation. One of the major principles of the BRICS grouping is to reinforce the centrality of multilateralism mm -hmm. and the importance of the United Nations system. For South Africa, this is critical. Therefore, we are part of BRICS, we are part of G20, we are part of IPSA and other formations precisely to reinforce and strengthen the multilateral regime. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we live in a very challenging global uh, security environment. And therefore, we have within the BRICS an established track called the National Security Advisors Track, mm -hmm. where they meet annually. And as of last year, the outcomes of the meeting of the NSA ministers is reported to at the BRICS summit to show you just how important this ministerial track of national security advisors is and how s seriously the issue of global security is taken within the BRICS mm. configuration. Now we'll follow the same format this year. The South Africa's chair, our Minister of State Security, will chair the meeting of national security advisors and the outcome of that meeting will be reported to the Leaders' Summit. Uh, the kind of polarization of the world that you are seeing emerging from some quarters is not in keeping with what BRICS is about. You will see that all of the BRICS leaders, from President Zuma to President Xi to Prime Minister Modi, President Putin, President Temer, we have all been speaking of a peaceful, inclusive world. That is what mm -hmm. BRICS stand for. Mm -hmm. And how can we work together to overcome some of these challenges that we want to be seen not as a group that seeks to have hegemony over a, any other group. Mm -hmm. That's not the basis on which BRICS came together. Yeah. But how can we as a group positively impact in creating a more equitable global environment, mm -hmm. be it on the political security front? And how can we use collectively our resources to work with other like-minded countries that would like to see an inclusive world, that would like to see a world where we all prosper together, mm -hmm. and how we together tackle the global security challenges. And one of those challenges is terrorism. Mm -hmm. And therefore it receives serious attention within the BRICS as well. When we speak of an inclusive global community, it is not just lip service. Yeah. We speak of inclusiveness in terms of not just economic inclusiveness, social inclusiveness, but also political inclusiveness. I mean, one of the areas that we have been championing for is reform of the United Nations, including the Security Council. Yeah. I mean, for, for South Africa, this is a critical issue. So will that be key on it's, agenda? It's always on the agenda. Okay, just it's always on the agenda. Yeah. You see, I mean, look, as BRICS countries, we discuss robustly. It doesn't mean we agree on every issue. We are five independent sovereign countries. We have national positions on issues. But that doesn't preempt us speaking very frankly to each other. And I, I must say, we do speak very robustly and frankly to each other on some of the issues where we differ on. But at the end of the day, we are able to respect each other's position and to find a position that takes us forward. Mm. And I think that's the strength of the BRICS mm. uh, formation. Very often we are asked, you are five such diverse countries. You have very little in common. My argument is that actually we have far more in common and far less that, okay. that differentiates us. Sure, we will have differences, but we don't delve on that. We rather build on areas where we can see complementarity mm -hmm. and synergy, and those are massive. Yeah. The fact that we have expanded in just a decade, just a decade, to over 14 ministerial working groups, and annually each presidency hosts 100 plus meetings. South Africa will host close to 100 meetings. And these are not just meetings for the sake of meetings. 
What we made very clear, and we want to also be the hallmark of our presidency, and which our leaders stressed at the summit last year as well, they want to see implementation, implementation, implementation. Because very often we are asked by the public, by our civil society, what value is there for South Africa in being part of BRICS? Yeah. And we must demonstrate that South Africa being part of what is today seen as a very important global bloc yeah. has not just political value to South Africa, it has economic value to South Africa, it has people-to-people -people enhancement value to South Africa, it provides our people tremendous opportunities in terms of skills, technology transfer, capacity building, and just cross-fertilization of cultures and civilization. That itself is a rich interaction that is part of the BRICS uh, uh, activity. Each BRICS summit has the distinct mark of the presidency yeah. on it yeah. because each presidency puts forward some priorities and which they regard as important but we consult it and then get consensus on it. For South Africa I think there are two major unique developments that will take place with regard to, to the summit in South Africa. We have set ourselves four strategic priorities which have been endorsed by the IMC Firstly, we don't have a dedicated women's track in BRICS. So we are now going to launch a track for women and gender mainstreaming and empowerment. Okay. And I think that's an important development to provide the space and the fora for women to get together from the five BRICS countries and see how we can work together, sharing best experiences, sharing challenges and how we can address this collectively and also to leverage the tremendous opportunities that are there. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a very important uh, development within the BRICS configuration and it's an innovation that South Africa has put on the table. We have our established ministerial tracks that are going to be meeting. Very important, the BRICS Business Council, Dr. Irbar Survey is, is chair of the South African chapter very active, working very well together. You'll have a BRICS business forum. Normally you get to a thousand plus uh, BRICS uh, business community members from all of the five BRICS countries descending on South Africa. So that's going to be another vibrant forum because one of the, what we say that BRICS is not just about governments getting together. It is about our, to what we call the track two, our private sector, our businesses getting together, having the space to interact and to see how we deepen uh, interaction between our business sector. Our academics and uh, think tanks will get together under the Think Tank Council and of course civil society will also organize their own meeting yes. and we encourage that we have a very good interaction mm -hmm. with civil society. BRICS must be about the people. Mm -hmm. It can't be that we are discussing mm -hmm. issues that impact on the lives of our people and they're not party to yes. it. So that's also a very important part of it.